Hello folks and welcome back to the paddock here at the Red Bull Ring at the end of the first weekend of competition for the 2020 Formula One season. Will Buxton, Lawrence Barreto back with you to discuss the finer points of the race. And where else are we going to start other than that last lap by Lando Norris, his first Formula One podium. What an astonishing day for him. He's been on it all weekend. He's kind of usurped Carlos Sainz's more experienced teammate. And all the way through that Grand Prix, he was making progress. When they had that contact with Sergio Perez, I had my heart in my mouth. But he managed to hold that together. And then we had that final, final flurry of laps where he just, when the team told him he had to get on with it, he got on with it. And, he, and what, a, what a lap, what a lap. It, it was amazing. And uh, his screams in the car on that slowdown lap, the way he embraced uh, Zach Brown. I think they're probably in the same bubble, so <laughs> they're okay for not social distancing. Just... It's just the joy and it, you know, it brought to mind what we saw in Brazil last year with McLaren, a team very much on the up, just reveling in the joy of the moment. Lando didn't have the best of it last year, I think. So it's really nice that all the hard work that he put in last year has finally been rewarded. He's been on it, as I said, all weekend. And when the opportunity came, he took it and you could see the scream in his voice, the passion. He just really, really wanted this. And he's finally got that kind of monkey off his back now. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the classic Lando Norris celebration, <laughs> the double <laughs> and the champagne smashed into the ground and the big rocket of champagne out. Uh, absolutely brilliant to see. Of course, all of this, though, stemmed from the end of the third safety car period mm -hmm. because it looked for all the world like it was going to be Alex Albon's day. He and Lewis Hamilton going wheel to wheel around turn four. Alex with the outside line, but Lewis, he just let his car veer just ever so slightly front left into rear right. And for the second time, we spoke about Brazil oh. with, the, with the unexpected McLaren podium. Lewis knocking out Alex. Once again, Lewis contact with Alex Albon and an unexpected McLaren podium. Definitely. Oh, it hurt so much, Alex Albon, in the first time around in Brazil. So I can't imagine what he's feeling right now. It took him a long time to get over it, so I don't know how long this one's going to take. But in that moment, he had to go for it, Well, We were talking about it when we were watching it. He had to go for it. He could have been patient, but he went for it. He, Lewis initially left him space, which I thought was good, yep. but then he just didn't, he kind of didn't open the steering wheel up, and then that kind of forced Alex, and that was the contact. So it was disappointing. And that led to a five-second penalty for Lewis Hamilton, at which point Lando knew he had to get on it. He did by passing Sergio Perez. Similarly robust move to, to those that we saw last year between Leclerc and Verstappen up at that turn three. But I think not quite as severe uh, as that contact. It was more just a little bump through and Sergio really on borrowed time given that he was on the mediums that he changed to very, very early, early on in the race. It flipped for Sergio, didn't it? Because at one stage it was looking very good. So it was unlucky that it kind of flipped the other way for him. But Lando took his opportunity, little kiss as they kind of went through and it was lucky there was no damage, so he kind of slipped through. And then when they obviously gave him the call to say, look, you need to get on with it, mate, he got on with it. And that final lap, like building up when it matters, having been put under so much pressure by Carlos early in the race, yeah. that he managed to deliver it and put it all together, phenomenal. Now, none of this would have happened without the three safety car periods in the race. Each one left us with a very different feel to the grid, but ultimately all played towards these final laps uh, and the way that they played out. The very first safety car period, left us with the entire field on the hard compound tire other than Sergio Perez on the medium. And at that point you think, hello, we might have one of those racing point, you know, giant killing days where Sergio's the one on the right strategy. As it is, he ultimately got a penalty, not for the, um, it looked like an unsafe release mm -hmm. with Lando Norris, but for actually speeding in the pit lane. Oh, that was so close, that unsafe, that release that wasn't an unsafe release. It put, I had my heart in my mouth at that moment. But he, at that point, it looked like Racing Point had played a blinder leaving him out. I thought at the point that they'd, they'd called it wrong, but I think that was the right thing yeah. to do. It was just a shame that, as, obviously, as the race unfolded thereafter, it just didn't play to his advantage. But at that point, yep, they were in great shape. No one could have foreseen that we'd get a second safety car. That second safety car brought almost everybody in, but not the Mercedes duo. They ultimately chose to stay out, and that was the biggest effect uh, I think uh, on the race because they could have lost it as a result of that. Alex Albon came in, changed onto the soft tyre. Kimi Raikkonen came in, changed onto the soft tyre. Both McLarens came on and changed onto the medium tyre. So at this point, you're thinking, right, anyone who's behind on the fresher tyres can attack the Mercedes, who at this point were looking hugely vulnerable, weren't we? We heard the Mercedes team radio constantly every lap. It's critical, it's critical. Stay off those kerbs. So at that point, they were kind of at, at ease. They could have got attacked. It was a shame then that what happened thereafter, but Alex Albon at that point was in prime position to win that Grand Prix, win it. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's why he made that move early doors uh, when we finally got back to racing. 
but we weren't expecting to have a third safety car, and that happened for the driver that we've already said changed onto those soft tyres, Kimi Raikkonen, right front, wasn't attached properly. It left the car as we went back to racing, and actually as we'd gone back to racing, Albon had put the move on Perez, mm -hmm. gave that position back thinking that the safety car had been called out too early. In fact, he gave that position then back to Perez, yep. which allowed him to make the move on Hamilton. So all of these safety cars playing together to give us that running order that saw that phenomenal, really exciting end to the Grand Prix. That move actually by Alex Albon on Sergio Perez was phenomenal. Oh, he got it done right, right, late breaking, but also he got it done just before the safety car period came in. And it's, I think it speaks a lot about Alex Albon that he gave the position back because he probably thought he was in the wrong. He wanted to do the right thing. It's fortunate that they obviously the team went onto the radio to the FIA and said, look, guys, we think we deserve this position. He got it back. And at that point, he had a good chance. He really did, and on any other day, Alex Albon not just would have finished on the podium, but you got to think might have taken the race victory. This was, however, a day of massively high attrition. Uh, we had, I think, nine retirements uh, in the Grand Prix. Uh, of course, the first one of those being Max Verstappen, a day to forget for Red Bull on this, mm. their home circuit. Uh, early on in the race, obviously, he had been moved up to second after the Lewis Hamilton penalty, so it was actually looking very good for Red Bull and Max, and he managed to keep pace with... Um, Bottas after keeping, I think it was Lando Norris mm -hmm. off at the start, mm -hmm. and it was looking very good. Um, he had good pace, we had a long way to go in the race, and then obviously then there's mechanical issues. We're not quite sure what it was no. at this point in time, but it seemed like a lot of things went wrong. A lot of things went wrong for a lot of people. Today, Daniel Ricciardo had an issue. Both Haas cars failed to finish the race. Break issues for both of them. Luckily for Kevin Magnussen going up into turn three, and it was only, I think, the steepness of the hill and him kicking the thing into a spin that mm -hmm. stopped a monstrous accident uh, at that corner, because that's not where you want to lose your brakes at all. Grosjean yeah. ultimately with brake issues too. Um, as we saw George Russell, disappointment Aww. for him. He brought out the second safety car. Um, he'd been looking good, could have been on for points today as well. But it does pull to the disappointing day that Sebastian Vettel had, that his teammate finishes on the podium. And even with all those retirements and having finished 11th, he only finished 10th. I know. I think he would have hoped for so much more when this day began. Even when he had that, act, when he had the spin, when he made contact with Carlos Sainz, I think he still would have thought there was something to get from this afternoon. But we've had one of these races now where Sebastian's kind of just not looked his old self and he made the same old mistake. There was no opportunity there and he had to go. Yep. Very disappointing. Very disappointing. So there we go. Uh, some amazing uh, moves here. And we haven't even spoken uh, about the brilliant drive by Charles Leclerc and the phenomenal drive by Valtteri Bottas, who did everything he needed to do mm -hmm. today in a damaged car that he had to nurse to the finish. He did everything right to bring home maximum points, 25 for him, and the perfect start to his World Championship campaign. I think often when a driver leads from the front, you think, well, that was just an easy ride. But for, for Bottas, he was dodging bullets, as he said in the press conference, all day long. Safety cars, the problems with the car, um, Lewis Hamilton putting pressure on him all the way through the Absolutely. Grand Prix. It was a phenomenal drive from him. He didn't put a foot wrong today. A great race, a great weekend, and we get to do the whole thing over again uh, in another five days' time. Uh, it's goodbye from us. Join us again exactly back here in five days. We'll see you later.